and hello YouTube, this is GS Man I'm Smart, and I'm today with a brand new video for tutorials with GS. In today's tutorial, we're going to take a look at GIMP and how to create an explosion effect within the program. And be aware, this tutorial does not require you to have any advanced texture skills or different textures, different brushes. Uh, we're going to try to do it a simple way so that it isn't too difficult for you to do and it isn't too time consuming for you to do as well. With the new GIMP feature, such as dynamic options, we're able to actually do some randomizing in the brush strokes, which makes it a bit easier to create this effect. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. And the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is create a new canvas. So go up to file, go to new, and we're going to go make this a 1280 by 720. That should be large enough. And we're going to make the background here black. So grab our paint bucket tool here, make it black, and we're ready to go. Now we're going to go and create a new layer here. So right at the bottom here, click create new layer. And make sure it's transparent. Make sure that the uh, size is the same. Should be the same. Go ahead and press OK. And we have a new layer here in our layers panel. Now from here on, we're going to go ahead and zoom in just a bit to the picture. Uh, you can zoom in anywhere, really. But essentially, we're going to be creating a shape a four-sided shape. So go and grab your paths tool. There are several ways of doing this, but I'm going to be using the paths tool and just draw a four-sided shape. Could look like anything. I'm going to go ahead and make it look like this. Once you want to connect it up, go ahead and hold down the control button and then connect it up like so. And we're going to go ahead and zoom out just to see how big it is. And that's fine. That's a good size. Go ahead and go up to windows, then go to dockable dialogues, go to the paths option. And that will bring up the paths menu on the right side here. This is the path that we have so far at the bottom. Go ahead and click path to selection. That will create a selection around our path. Then go ahead and grab your paint bucket tool. Change your foreground to white. If we go back to our layers panel, control L, make sure you're on your new layer. Go ahead and fill in the selection. Go up to select none. And then what we're going to do is grab our rectangle tool, rectangular select tool, and draw a selection around this uh, little shape that we created. So like that, that's fine. Then go ahead and hit control C to copy. You can also go up to edit and click copy. And then what we're going to do is go to our brush again. And for the brush type right here, go ahead and select the first option. And this is basically a clipboard option. You can select anything in GIMP. And if you copy it, it'll be copied to your clipboard. And when it's copied to your clipboard, you can actually use that selection as a brush. So look at this. This is pretty cool, actually. So if we go to select none. We can actually just copy this, this shape that we made and it can be, it's basically used as a brush. Which is really cool is going to help us create this explosion effect a lot easier. So the next step is to actually make this brush size a bit bigger. Now, depending on the size of your canvas, it will be different for you. However, I think I'm going to go about 150. You can change this. Uh, this actually might be a bit too big. Perhaps I'll go 125. Eh, that's still a bit too big. How about 115? Yeah, that's a bit better. Yeah, that's fine. So once you have your uh, size selected, go ahead and scroll down here in this little panel here and make sure you click apply jitter. And for this jitter amount, just go ahead and put a, a 20 value. Then under dynamic options here, go ahead and make sure for the gradient, you select shadows too. Now you don't need to select shadows too. You can choose your own colors. You can make your own gradient. Um, but if you click shadows too, you'll basically get the result that I'm going to be using. And it looks fairly good. So we're going to be using shadows too. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of customization you can uh, do with this explosion effect. I'm just going to show you a quick example of how you can do it. And at the end of the video, I'll show you some of the things you can change uh, to your preference. But once you have that gradient selected, go up to Windows again. Then go to Dockable Dialogs and click Paint Dynamics. Now in Paint Dynamics, at the bottom, go ahead and create a new dynamic. And then here, look for the random column, which is the second to last one here. This one right here. And select Size, Angle, Color, and Aspect Ratio, and then Jitter. Now what this means is that every time you use a brush, it will randomize 
these values that you've ticked, these parameters that you've ticked basically. If we were to hover our mouse over our picture, you can see how it's changing every time we basically move the mouse. So that's basically what it's doing. Now, if we go back to our layers here, we want to go ahead and hide this layer because this was just a template for our brush. Create a new transparent layer. And then what we're going to do is just basically create a center. Now you see how this randomly generates a ton of these? That's the idea. But find the center of your image and just sort of create the center uh, explosion effect. So it may take you several times to get it right of however you want it to look. But I think that looks fairly good for me. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and change the size to a bit of a larger brush size, maybe 160. And we're going to create the sides for the sides here. And once again, you can uh, do this as wildly as you want or as um, cleanly as you want. Just be creative with it. But essentially, you want to have your middle be the center here with the smaller ones and then the outside here have larger ones. So I might do something like that. That looks fairly good. And then what we're going to do is go up to filters in filters, blur, motion blur, and make sure you have zoom selected here. And then make sure you have a value of 30 or 40, depending on your canvas size. I'm going to go to use a value of 40. You can always change this and then it will render the changes. You'll see the loading bar at the bottom here. And once that's done, you should see a result of this, which looks really cool. It looks like it's, it, look, it looks like the explosion is, you know, an explosion when stuff explodes from the center, like it's a mo there's a motion blur of like things flying out really quickly. That's the effect we're doing here. Now after that, we're gonna go create another new layer, new layer, transparent. And you should now have your layer with your uh, shapes, your background layer, the hidden, uh, sample of the brush and then your new layer here so four layers and in this new layer we're going with the filters lights and shadows supernova and here you want to make sure this is at the center try to center this in the middle here and try to pick a color that's very explosiony so maybe like an orangey yellow and a very light one at that too so maybe something like that that looks fairly good and if you need to reposition this, you can. And then for the radius, we're going to use a radius of 50. If your image is very large, you may want to use a bigger radius. Um, for the next option, probably gonna use 180 and zero. That should do. If you see it's not in the center again, or you have a better idea what the center is now, you can change it. Go ahead and press OK, and that will generate a supernova for you. Now, if you see that, um, it's... The idea is that this supernova should be in the center of like right where your explosion stuff is. So if you see that you haven't really, you haven't really gotten this to the correct spot, you can always move it. However, the problem with moving it is, is that you see how the effect sort of here gets sectioned off. A way to solve that is to grab your, well first go ahead and move it to the spot you want it to move to. So I want it to be there. Then go ahead and grab your scale tool. And all you gotta do is just scale it past the boundary here, like so, and then just move it to the spot again. And if you if you still see if you still see that there's a problem, you can zoom it some more. Now the problem with this is, is that it does sort of bring this blurry whiteness, it sort of exaggerates it a bit over the image. So essentially, what you want to do for this to be perfect, you want to uh, make the supernova in the center of your image or wherever your explosion is when you're in the filters option. You don't want to have to move and scale this like I'm doing right now. So be aware of that. Now this time we're gonna go up to filters again, blur, motion blur, and this time we're gonna pick zoom and instead of a 40, go ahead and pick 200, press okay. Now if you end up getting something like this, uh, we may want to use a smaller motion blur. Perhaps 200's a bit too much. So what we're gonna do is actually perhaps use a hundred only and we'll see if that's any better. Okay, so there we go. We basically did a zoom of a hundred. Make sure when you're doing that, make sure when you're doing that blur, you also do a zoom blur again and not a linear blur. A hundred seemed to have uh, gotten it a bit better. 
So from here on, what we're gonna do is go up to filters one more time, go to blur, go to Gaussian blur, and we're gonna use a value of 15, and that will automatically set the bottom to 15 as well. Once again, th this is up to experimentation. You may have to do a larger Gaussian blur, maybe a less, uh, depending on what type of effect you want. But for me, 15 is fine. And then we're gonna set our layer mode of this to screen. So right up here, change this to screen just like that and then we're gonna right click the top layer here and click new from visible and that'll basically create a uh, a duplicate of everything that's visible here and it's sort of like an adjustment layer like in Photoshop go up to colors right here go to curves and we're just gonna do a natural s curve here the traditional s curve where we darken the darks a bit and lighten the lights a bit like so and press OK. And you can tell the uh, difference here. Looks a lot better. From here on, you can sort of mess around with the color balance a bit if you want a hue saturation or the colorization as well. But let's go ahead and go to color balance real quick. And for shadows, let's go ahead and go 0, 0, negative 5 here at the bottom. Then for midtones, we can possibly go 5, 0, negative 10. And then for the highlights, we'll just keep that at 0. Go ahead and press OK. And you can tell the difference here. We have it. We have a nice little orangey yellow tint. And if you want to add other other sorts of uh, curves or color saturations, or you want to do some uh, hue balances or other c color options, you can do that. As I said before in the beginning of the video, you don't need to follow this tutorial exactly like I have. You could use different shapes. You could use a different sample brush. You can use a different gradient. You can use different jitter values. Uh, but essentially, the tutorial really is here to show you how to do it and you know the steps that need to be taken to complete this method, to complete an explosion effect. So hopefully you understood that and hopefully that was helpful to you. I would say creativity and sort of messing around with different options is the key to a great explosion effect. So I definitely encourage you to do that, but hopefully you understood the process. And if you enjoyed this video, if you liked this video, go and give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, if you got confused on something, if you got lost or something doesn't work for you, go and leave a comment down below. I'll definitely down there answering any questions you have. So if you enjoyed this video or any of my other videos as well, so other GIMP guides or the other Photoshop guides or video editing tutorials that I have, you can always donate a dollar to my Patreon. Anything as low as that is always helpful and very much appreciated. All you gotta do is click the card in the top right corner of the screen. And I also have a gaming channel, vlogging channel, music channel, and advice channel. If you want to check that out, links are in the description as well as on the end card. And with that, thank you for watching as always. And this is GS Man Smart, and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere. Okay.